Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I have a small kind of DIY for you. I do have a bigger DIY coming in two days time. So on Thursday, there will be like another Poundland inspired DIY. I didn't want to post it today because I know I posted on really recently. I was going to wait till next week, but I figured I may as well post it this week. So to break it up a little bit, I thought I would show you a DIY that I made over the weekend using those tweed squares that I said about a few videos ago. I don't quite remember what video it was in, but I remember them arriving and me talking a bit about them but this is what I created um I'm not gonna lie I did kind of cheat a little bit and I did buy the pillowcase and pillow but I did obviously do this all of this like um applique on here using the little tweed squares to make these pumpkins so without further ado I'm just get straight on into the video stop rambling and catch up with you at the end of the tutorial so obviously, like I said, I did cheat a little bit and actually have this cushion cover from B&M. This was only $5.99. The fabric of it and everything was really, really good quality. And to be honest, I wouldn't have been able to make one, you know, including the zipper, getting the pillow, um, like inner and everything like that for less than $5.99. And as I only wanted one, it just worked out more cost effective this way. So what I went ahead and did was I cut off all of the tags, removed the cushion inner, and then I just started placing down those three little kind of squares of Harris tweed that I spoke about previously. So in order to get them into a pumpkin shape, I actually used some of this Bonder Web by Violene, and I just ironed it on as like a backing. And then on the paper back, I just drew out my pumpkin shape. I then went ahead and just cut this out and then this acts as like an iron-on kind of transfer then and it also keeps the fabric from like fraying it allows you know for really easy like drawing and cutting out as well so that's why I always prefer to use this backing so once I had all three of the pumpkins cut out, I just went ahead and removed the paper side of the um, bonder web. I then had obviously the pieces left then to be ironed on. So I took them one at a time, ironed them on, and I also stitched them on as well, just to make sure that this was gonna hold up for years to come. Like I make my pieces to last the test of time, but of course you don't have to sew this if you don't want to. Now, sewing a pre-made cushion cover is a little bit tricky because obviously you don't want to sew through to the back. So it takes a lot of adjusting around the kind of like base of your sewing machine, but you can get there with a little bit of adjusting as you go. Obviously, like I said, you don't have to sew, but I wanted to just to make sure mine was, you know, fully secure as could be, but the bonder web would have worked perfectly as well. This just kind of held it in place while I sewed it down so it was even better. Um, I actually took some of this embroidery floss that I have. I actually have a huge huge bag of it which I bought off of eBay in bulk quite a few years ago now. I think I paid like less than two pounds for like 150 embroidery flosses or something but it means I have like every shade under the sun now which is just perfect. Um, so what I went ahead and did was I made sure to have a good thick layer on my needle and just kind of backstitched my way to make the segments of the pumpkin. As you've seen there, I just like whizzed through two lots, but on this one here, I slowed it down for you so you could see what I was doing. I do recommend drawing your lines on, so I just used a white Posca paint pen for mine because I knew I was pretty neat at it. If you want something more washable, you can buy like a washable marker or something like that to put on, and then obviously you can wash out the line if you're not very competent at sewing. So I just went ahead and just backstitched all the way up, just putting my needle up through, going around, poking it back through, and basically just doing like looping back on itself you can of course just do a normal straight stitch if you want but i just prefer to do this as i know it stands the test of time to put the stalks in place i did use an embroidery hoop just to keep the cushion cover nice and flat i did lots of back stitching in amongst a shape that i just stitched out with my embroidery floss again and i just filled it in with those back stitches until i had something that looked like this for the last pumpkin, I actually just made a really simple stalk at the top, just in the exact same way that I did the other two. So obviously, like I said, I did cheat and um, I didn't make the pillowcase. That isn't because um, I can't make a pillowcase. Um, pillowcases, in all honesty, aren't that hard to make. So if you need to make one, then go for it. But I found this one here in B&M for a really, really reasonable price with the pillow. Um, insert included as well. The texture of it was just gorgeous and it was only $5.99 and I figured like half a meter of like some good quality fabric would cost me more than that and 
To be honest, I only needed one, so I thought, you know, I may as well just buy the pillowcase, so that's what I did. Um, yeah, I appliqued on all of the kind of tweed, and I think they look gorgeous. Obviously, hand-stitched. I know this one here is a bit wonky. Keep looking at them, thinking it's a bit angular compared to all of them. So I might actually go back in and just, like, straighten that up a little bit. But to be honest, I think it adds to, like, the handmade touch, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, really, really happy. It's bringing some, like, proper full colours in here, as well as keeping with the neutral background, which I really like. I only kind of want a touch of the, like, traditional full colours in here, as well as, like, bringing mostly neutral so I think that this is going to be a perfect kind of addition. I have been layering it just in front of this like giant burn orange cushion which I think looks really nice tying in with the fact that this one down here is kind of a burnt colour. I don't know, kind of like it you know. So anyway I hope you enjoyed this video and it sparks a little bit of inspiration for you to maybe create your own cushion or do a bit of sewing just anything really, get your craft on, do what you gotta do. So yeah, hopefully you are enjoying all of my DIYs. There are so many more to come. You have no idea, I'm so excited for you to see them. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video and I will see you very soon for my Poundland DIY in a couple of days. Bye.